This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So moving on in terms of evaluating our financial objectives, uh, we've gone through and looked at your basic ratios, haven't we? And some growth in earnings or earnings per share, I think the example was. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, we're now going to move that on and begin to look at your investor ratios. Uh, so things that we've seen previously from F2, we're looking at maybe your price earnings ratio, dividend cover, uh, dividend yield, earnings per share. We've already touched upon earnings per share in the previous video, haven't we? Uh, so here what we've got, uh, just a couple of additional examples. Uh, so you've got the one example that looks at your calculating, is it your return on capital employed? And also your return on equity. Okay, uh, so we've seen return on capital employed previously within F2. We didn't really see much of return on equity, so I'll touch upon that a little bit more as we go through. Uh, the second example talked about an annual return to investors. Uh, so that's something a little bit new. So when we're looking at an annual return, where we're looking at a percentage increase in your wealth. That's what we mean by our annual return. Uh, we need to see whether or not it satisfies the requirement of our shareholders. So a little bit like what we mentioned in the previous video, it's not just about calculating and crunching the numbers. It's also as well about trying to apply that to a particular scenario to see whether or not we meet the set targets. Uh, and then the last one talks about earnings yield. Well, we didn't see that at all in F2. Well, what we've got to calculate here is your price earnings ratio and then your earnings yield is just the inverse of your price earnings ratio. OK, and again, we then need to use that to see which one of the two companies that we have has the better future. OK, excellent. So let's look at that first example that we have on the page, the return on equity. Uh, we want return on capital employed and return on equity. Now, you've just got to be a little bit careful there because when you're looking at your return on capital employed, if we work out your return on capital employed, your return on capital employed is your profits before interest and tax divided by your capital employed, wasn't it? If we want to be specific, we will multiply it by 100%. Okay. Uh, capital employed, remember what capital employed is equal to, it's your equity plus your net debt, isn't it? Uh, profits before interest in taxes, like your operating profit. And what your return on equity is showing is the return, the profitability that the company has generated used on all of the funds it has at its disposal. So using debt finance and also equity finance. So it's looking at a return for both the equity and the debt holders. It doesn't make any distinction between either the debt or the equity holders and the return that they are getting. Okay, It's a return overall for the business based upon how it has been financed. That's why we then just start looking at your return on equity uh, because that then looks at the return that the equity holders that themselves get, just the shareholders, what do they get as a return? Well, when they're getting their return, they get their return, their dividends, don't they, out of the company's profits for the year. So what we take there is not your profits before interest and tax, but your profits for the year. And then the return that they get is based upon the equity that they have invested. So that gives us a return for the equity holders only. And that will be different, won't it? Uh, from the return that the overall business has generated for both the equity and the debt holders. OK, happy with that? Yeah, read the question very, 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 very carefully, because if you don't, you'll calculate the wrong thing. So what you've got there, uh, you can see that we're given two figures. We're given 19.5 million. Is that the, your profits for interest and tax? We also have, is it the 12.5 million? So is that your profits for the year, isn't it? Okay, so when I'm using my formula down below, here we've got your, is it 19.5 million? And then is it the, I think, is it your 
12.5 million. Okay, excellent. Uh, it then says the company has 18 million of debt in the SFP and is it third or 138 million share capital and reserves. Remember, your equity is share capital plus reserves. And we're talking about all of your reserves. Okay, share premium, retained earnings, other components of equity, whatever equity reserve is within there. So here, my capital employed was it 138. Uh, my equity, well, careful, uh, that was my equity, wasn't it? The debt I need to add on there was 18. And then for my return on equity, careful, see how easy it is just to go through and make a, a slight mistake. And then 138, isn't it? Okay. Out comes the trusty calculator. Uh, so my return on capital employed, if I tap it in correctly, is that there, if you multiply by 100%, gives me 12.5%. So that's the overall return that the business generates for all of its finance holders. Uh, and here is it for the equity holders of that 12.5%, 9.1 of it is there for your equity holders, isn't it? Okay. Uh, Fantastic. There we go. Everybody happy with that? Excellent. Okay. Again, uh, you'll get marks in the exam for calculator. Return on capital employed. Return on equity. You just need to be careful that you distinguish between the two. Okay. Excellent. Happy with that? Excellent. Uh, next one, the example that we have there is your annual return to investors. So something a little bit new. Sometimes referred to as your total shareholder return. Okay. Because when you're a shareholder, you obviously you expect some capital growth within the share so that will be a return won't it and you can work that out as a percentage uh growth based upon what the previous share price was at the start of the year but don't forget as a shareholder as well as capital growth you're also going to get dividends aren't we okay and that dividend will give you some form of return won't it okay so you need to look at your total shareholder return not just the capital growth but but also the dividend here so what we've got in terms of our return uh what we have there is we can look it at the change in your share price plus your dividend divided by the opening share price isn't it okay that's it nothing to do with it uh so what have we got within this example uh you can see that that trot price at the start was 235 and it had grown is it there to 254 okay so here when i'm looking at my change in share price 254 less 235 i'll need to add on the dividend and work it out as a percentage i suppose if i want to be 100 percent technically correct multiplied by 100 percent isn't it there we go okay uh, and then just to complete it in terms of the calculations uh, it says there that the most recent financial statements, a dividend of 15 cents per share was recorded. Okay, excellent. 15 cents per share. Okay, or $0.15. So we'll add that in. Be careful. It will be the 0.15. Uh, so what have we got there? Uh, 2.54 less 2.35. Don't do it in your head. Do it on a calculator. 0 0.19 plus 0 0.15. So it's 0 0.19 plus 0 0.15 divided by 2.35. Times uh, 100. Does that give me 14.5%? to the nearest decimal place, to one decimal place, okay? Yeah, happy. That's not too difficult, is it? Uh, then what have we got? Make sure you answer the question. There is an and in there and determine whether this will satisfy the requirement of the shareholders. <sighs> well, here, trot, 15% per annum is what they required. 
So versus 15%. Has it been met? Have they got 15% growth? No. Okay. The, the total shareholder return, the annual return that we generated was 14.5 versus 15. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot you can do about the share price. You can't manipulate share prices. You could if you wanted, you know, and this way you've got to be careful as a director, isn't it? You know, maybe if you'd have changed, uh, no, even if you change it to 16 cents, it doesn't work. Okay. What was the, what would the dividend be that you'd have to pay uh, to meet that return? Uh, 4.19 plus 0.17. Yeah, if you'd have changed your dividend, and if you'd have made it 17 cents, okay, then you would have achieved that 15% return. So if one of your financial objectives is to make sure that you meet that annual return or total shareholder return, then you've got to make sure that you pay out an appropriate dividend. And here, Trot hadn't. They'd only paid 15 cents. To be able to pay 17 cents would have ensured that they would have met that overall return. I think it works out if you're playing around on your calculator that would have given us a total shareholder return at 15.3 percent that's assuming that by paying out a higher dividend it didn't have a bigger impact on the share price okay let's just assume the share price stayed constant let's try and keep it reasonably simple shall we yeah good idea folks excellent uh the next one uh the earnings yield okay uh what have we got uh, so it says calculate Kenny's P.E. ratio. Do it yourself. OK, have a quick go now. OK, what have you got? So you got a price of two point five dollars. Earnings per share. Fifty two cents. Get your calculator out quickly, quickly. OK, yeah, you should, where is it? There it is. You've got it. Excellent. OK, so my price earnings ratio. What have we got? Uh, you've beaten me to it. I can hear you shouting at me. Four point eight. Excellent. So was it two dollars fifty? I will do it for you just in case. Uh, divided by 52 cents. And that works out, was it, at 4.8. Okay. Excellent. Uh, use this to establish uh, the company which the markets consider having a better future performance. Uh, well, our main competitor has a P ratio of 6. So remember what your P ratio is showing is that based upon the current most recent earnings. Okay. Or the trailing 12 months. If you ever see on the website PE ratio TTM, that stands for trailing 12 months. It's based on the historic earnings for the last 12 months. Uh, a price earnings ratio, the higher the better, isn't it? Because it's saying, look, your historic earnings uh, based on what has happened in terms of your sales and profitability is this. But the markets are building into that earnings, uh, the future sales, the future earnings and giving it a price attributable to what they think the share will do in the future. So if you have a higher price in relation to your earnings, then that must mean that the markets are predicting that there will be better sales and therefore better earnings in the future, and therefore we will be prepared to pay more. So the market is saying that we will be prepared to pay six times more than our earnings than our company, Kenny, uh, that is only prepared the, the shareholders to pay 4.8 times the earnings. Okay, excellent. Uh, to go through there and work out your earnings yield, uh, your earnings yield, now anything to do with yield is always thinking there, isn't it, about prices. Uh, so your earnings yield is just your earnings divided by your price or your earnings per share divided by your price per share uh, whereby here is it for Kenny uh, you've got is it 0 0.52 uh, divided by is it 2.5 so 0.52 divided by 2.5 uh, again if you're may, being 100% correct pardon the pun it's a year so it's a percentage so that there is 20.8%. Okay, Kenny is yielding 20.8%. I think if you were to work out the earnings yield for our competitor, uh, you would find that the current earnings yield is lower 
But given that the price earnings ratio is higher, remember that is the indicator of the future, okay, and what we think will happen in the future, okay. So the higher the P ratio, the better, okay. There you have it. Excellent. Uh, and then what we've got, uh, I think, if memory serves me right, is it just the final example on that page, or not on that page, uh, but within this section, uh, is going through there and looking at some dividend ratios, okay? Uh, so what we've got there uh, is, again, it's a bit of revision from F2, I think, most of this. Uh, so what you've got there, uh, so we're looking there at Hoy. Very cycling theme section, isn't it? Trot, Laura, Kenny and Hoy. Uh, so some infamous British cyclists. Uh, did we have Cavendish earlier on as well? If you're wondering where the names come from. Uh, so what you've got there, it says calculate the following ratios. Uh, it wants your dividend yield, doesn't it? Uh, so if I'm looking there at my dividend yield, is that there my dividend divided by my price, isn't it? So my dividend per share divided by my price per share. If I'm then going through there, I'm thinking about, is it my dividend cover? Uh, well, that's thinking, isn't it, about your earnings per share divided by your dividends per share, looking at how many times, isn't it? So remember, a dividend yield, that's a percentage. Your dividend cover is the number of times isn't it again this should be familiar to you so dividend cover looking at how safe your dividends are uh your dividend payout ratio okay uh goes through that and uh, look so is it one less is it your if memory serves me right your earnings per share divided by your Dividends per share, okay, uh, and then D is there uh, looking at your price earnings ratio, okay, excellent, okay, uh, have I got that right? Chris, can you just stop the video uh, to when I got to there, okay. Uh, that would be great. Okay, I'll save this and I'll start again. I'm just not too sure about the payout. I can't remember off the top of my head. Should have looked at my notes first. But there we go.